Hi, today I have an interesting device called TRMNL, which I'll refer to as Terminal from now on. It is a 7.5 inch ink display, which is what caught my attention, and in this video I'll explore what this device is and what we can do with it. If you power on the device and wait, you'll only see the device ID displayed. It doesn't respond to touch, so I believe it doesn't have a touch functionality. On the back of the device, there is only a power switch and a reset button, but pressing them doesn't do anything, so I think we need to register the device first. Inside the box, there is a 3-step instruction guide, which I think we have to follow. You need to connect to the device using a laptop or phone via Wi-Fi and save your Wi-Fi credentials. Just give me a few seconds. I registered the device by following the instructions. It was fairly easy. How it works is, on their website, you select one plugin that you find it interesting. The contents of it will appear on the device screen. For example, I currently selected the ISS International Space Station plugin, which simply shows the station's current location. Of course, there are other, more useful plugins available as well. You can browse through the available plugins on their website. They offer quite a few. You can also select multiple plugins to be displayed in sequence. The device connects to the Wi-Fi briefly to download the content, then goes into the sleep mode until the next scheduled update. That makes sense, otherwise the battery life would be much shorter. However, this means you can't instantly refresh the screen from the website. If you want to do that, you need to press the reset button on the back of the device. And obviously you need to be within the Wi-Fi range, otherwise the device won't be able to update its content. With a stable Wi-Fi connection it works quite well, ink displays are especially good for applications like a newspaper page where the content doesn't change much daily, updating once a day is sufficient in that kind of cases. If you can't find a plugin that interests you, you can create your own private plugins. It's pretty well documented and displaying a web page for example is entirely doable. Most of the heavy lifting is handled by their servers, since it's also open source, you can also set up your own service if you want. What I find most interesting is that the entire project is open source. You can visit their GitHub page to download the source code, essentially using this as a development port. The project is built with platform IO, which should make the programming the device fairly straightforward. I'll come back to this later as I plan to upload my own code to the device. Right now I'm curious about what makes this device work, so let's tear it open and see what's inside. If you want to also open the device, be careful, there are no screws or anything, but applying too much force to the corners could crack the screen. And it looks like there isn't much behind the large screen, just a small PCB and a medium-sized lithium-ion battery. Give me a few seconds, there are three screws I need to remove to take out the PCB. This is a fairly simple PCB, the main processor is an ESP32C3 module. Now I can confidently say that the board doesn't store much data locally, it likely keeps only a single page in the ESP32's memory or writing it with the next page after cleaning it with the previous screen. And next to it there is an IC with markings that don't return any results, however based on its placement, I believe it's a voltage regulator. This is the connector with e-paper driving circuitry, and here we have lithium-ion battery charger, and this one is the EST protection IC. On the back side, aside from the test points, there is nothing particularly interesting. That's about it for the PCB. Now I want to upload my own code to this PCB. I'll start by trying to upload it using a USB cable. To upload our code, we could solder cables to the test points, that would definitely work, but since ESP32C3 supports programming via USB, and they included an EST protection chip, I suspect the USB pins are routed to the port, so we should be able to program it through the USB unless they specifically disabled that functionality. To do that, we can simply switch the board off and back on right before uploading the code. The device quickly enters the deep sleep mode to save power, which disables the USB connection, so it's a little bit tricky, but still cleaner than using jumper wires. You could of course try to reverse engineer everything from scratch, but since they released their firmware as an open source, I'll just download it instead. It's a platform IO project, so it will automatically download all the necessary frameworks and libraries. All we have to do is opening the folder that we downloaded. After that, all we need to do is to press the upload button over here. That's one of the best things about platform IO. But let's try something different. I want to test how fast the screen is, just out of the curiosity. So I'll modify the code a little bit. I wrote a simple code without any delays to test both full and partial refresh speeds using Larry Banks library. I'll upload it now and see how the screen performs. 
I uploaded the code. By the way, the easiest way to do this is to connect the device to your PC via USB, switch it off, then turn it back on while holding the button on the back. This works because the button here is connected to the ESP32's boot pin. When you power on the device while holding it, the ESP32 enters the firmware update mode. After uploading your own code, you'll need to turn the device off and then back on again to restart. Let me do that real quick. After switching on the device, it will start right away. The initial refreshes you are seeing are the fast updates. It's refreshing the entire screen for the each word. When it starts writing the second line, it performs a full screen update, which is the default behavior for this type of display since it helps to eliminate the ghosting effect. Then the numbers will appear. That's the partial update. Instead of refreshing the entire screen, it only updates the specific areas that you want. This is useful when you only need to refresh part of the display rather than the whole screen. I'd say each type of refresh takes about 1 or 2 seconds, give or take. I think the main selling point of this device is the custom firmware they developed. So now I'm going to reinstall the original firmware onto the device. Reinstalling the original firmware is basically like performing a factory reset. You'll see your familiar device ID again and after that you can use the device as usual, selecting the plugins or recipes from the terminal website and setting how often the screen updates and so on. Now it's working normally again. I was thinking about what to do with this device since it's quite nice and could be used for many things. However, using it as a newspaper page isn't really ideal because newspapers are usually quite long and I think you need at least a 10 inch, preferably even 14 inch ink display for that kind of thing. There are plenty of plugins or recipes that you can experiment with it in terminal website though. They are planning to release 10.3 inch of the same device, which is currently only available for pre-order. It's expected to launch around by the end of 2025 and the new model will have higher pixel density which could make it much more suitable for newspaper-like applications. There are quite a few official plugins under the plugins link but there is something more interesting and which is called community recipes which are not the official recipes that terminal developers make and here you have tons of community made recipes that you can just install. I spent quite a bit of time browsing especially the community developed ones and it seems that any idea I came up with was already implemented. Especially this one. I was actually planning to make it myself but someone already beat me to it. Here in Netherlands we go everywhere by bicycle and getting caught in the rain is no fun so everybody checks out the weather before head out. Well this looks great. I'm definitely adding this one to my playlist. After all it's important to know where it's going to rain. And if you can't find what you are looking for, you can create your own private plugin. There are a few ways to do this. You first need to define how your data will be shared with the terminal uh, servers. Keep in mind that you need to have the developer edition activated to access and create private plugins or fork existing ones. Let's take a look at one of the community created plugins. This one provides touch weather updates. It basically fetches the latest weather data from the internet. To set it up, you need to choose your strategy and in this case, they are using the most common one, polling URLs. The feed provides the data and the code here retrieves from the server and creates the front fields to display it. Essentially, that's all there is to it. However, you need to have a server that provides the data in JSON format. Let's create our own plugin. The easiest way to start is by browsing through the existing recipes and finding the ones that is similar to what we are trying to achieve. I like this one, the Calvin and Hobbies cartoon plugin. I really like the idea of using this device as a comic viewer, so I am going to fork it and click OK. Now we can take a look at how this cartoon viewer was created. Let's give the plugin a different name and save it. We can then click force refresh to preview how the plugin's output will look in the web browser. So far everything looks like working fine. But of course, instead of Calvin and Hobbes, I want to display something else. Let's find another comic. I like Buse and Sket, for example, so I'll use its feed instead of Calvin and Hobbes one. Let's check how it looks like by pressing the preview button and see if you're going to like it or not. Yes, this looks good. And I'll go back and just copy the feed onto the clipboard. As the polling URL, I'll pass the RSS feed in this format and click save. And from this button, we can edit markup. And here we can define how the plugin will be displayed on the screen. The current preview still shows the layout from the previous plugin, but I'll keep much of it same because 
It's more or less what I am trying to achieve anyway. If you want to learn more about setting up plugins or how markup works, you can simply click the documentation link. Everything is clearly explained there, so I won't go into details here. Once you are satisfied with your changes or have finished writing your own markup, you can return to the plugin settings and click force refresh. This will fetch the data you have provided. And as you can see, the comic from business cat is now displayed on the screen. I think it also makes sense to name this plugin business cat and update the icon to match it as well. If you are happy with how your plugin or recipe looks, you can click this button to make it public so anyone can install it. I've just submitted mine, so it'll probably be released in a day or two. You'll be able to find it by searching for Business Cat to install it on your own terminal device. I think this looks really nice. Cartoons display beautifully on this kind of e-paper screens, since e-paper displays are well suited for text or simple graphics. The size is really good for comic style applications and I really like how it turned out. If you create another cartoon plugin, let me know. I'd love to install it on this device and use it too. I was thinking about what to do with this device and considering making an RSS reader. It would have been pretty neat since it could display news from various websites and most newspapers already provide RSS feeds. But I have done something similar before, so there is no need to create another device with the same functionality. It would be great if since they already have a server deployed, we could run Python scripts directly through the terminal website, something that runs once a day, fetching data from the web or doing some styling, etc. That way we wouldn't need to host our own server for custom applications. For most general use cases though, the current setup is fine, but having the ability to run a Python script on their platform would be really amazing. I'm imagining something like a lightweight Jupyter notebook environment with common libraries pre-installed, and it executes simple scripts daily. Maybe that's a little bit ambitious for a device like that, but it would be a really fantastic addition. I think I found what I'm going to do next. I always love Dilbert Comics by Scott Adams, it would be really cool to have the device display the daily Dilbert strips. At first, I was planning to create my own private plugin and release it, like this plugin here, but I found even simpler way to do that. There is an official plugin called Screenshot, which simply captures a screenshot of a website and displays it on the device. So all I need to do is find a website that shows the daily Dilbert strip. And the sole purpose of this website is exactly that. We need to paste the URL to here, and save it, and we are done. It's pretty neat. I think this device is especially good for comics. I've tried using it for RSS readers and other applications, but the size didn't feel ideal for that, at least in my experience. Comics, on the other hand, looks really great, especially daily strips like Dilbert or similar ones, and that's what I'm going to use it mostly. The device's battery also lasts quite a while, the ink display itself uses very little power, and while the ESP32 draws more power during Wi-Fi use, it only does so for short periods. Most of the data processing is handled on their service, so the device doesn't do unnecessary stuff. They've clearly optimized it for battery life, and it has been around a week without needing a recharge. This shows that the battery efficiency is very achievable even with the SP32 based devices, especially the newer generations. And that's about it for now. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give a thumbs up, and see you next time.